Particularly because of two things. One, the nature of the relationships between Ghana and Germany have been excellent for, for virtually the entire period of our independent life. We've had a very warm, very constructive, very supportive relations with Germany. Germany has found it possible to assist us in so many diverse areas of our national life, in agriculture, in education, in health, and uh, we continue. Is it better? Is it, yeah. And then, those relations apart, we're particularly to have you here because all of us have admired very much your leadership of Germany. I think that there's general consent that, that in this our period you have been the outstanding figure of European politics. And it is therefore uh, an encouragement to us that you have found it possible to come and visit us. There are so many areas of our bilateral relationship that we have had the opportunity in this brief period to talk about. But they, the key parts of it for me are the emphasis that is being laid on investment and trade cooperation. We are determined to deal with the, issue, the matters confronting our country, youth unemployment, the desire of our youth to see greener pastures elsewhere, by improving the management of our national economy. The stronger the economy we have, the more opportunities it gives to young people, but obviously the pressure that there will be on them to make these hazardous undertakings will be, will be dealt with. So that's our focus. The measures that we need to take to strengthen our economy. And in so doing, we have set ourselves this target of a vision of a Ghana beyond aid, of a Ghana which will depend more and more and more on mobilizing its own internal resources to confront the issues of development that there are before us. Uh, we see a big role for Germany, Europe as well as Germany, in this. Because we believe that there are lots of opportunities here and we're hoping that this business delegation that you have brought with you will see the opportunities that there are in several of the flagship programs of our, of, of our government, the One District, One Factory Initiative, uh, the industrial parks that we are determined to create, the assembly and motor, the development of a motor automotive industry here in Ghana. I'm particularly happy to hear about the possibility of an agreement being signed today involving Volkswagen and, and, and the government and a local Ghanaian company for the assembly and uh, hopefully, ultimately one day, the production of automobiles here in Ghana, but certainly at the beginning of an assembly. And it's, it's, these are all the indi indices that we have that the management of the Ghanaian economy that we have seen since we came into office is now beginning to elicit the kind of investment, uh, investor interest and confidence that we require for our forward move. We are co we're cooperating, as you know, very well with, to deal with the issues of illegal migration of Ghanaians in Germany. It's, it's not a matter by which we're particularly happy or proud about, but it is a reality and uh, we have also to live in the real world and I, I think that the cooperation with Ghanaian authorities have been extending the German authorities uh, have helped us manage this matter in a constructive and, 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 and effective way. We will continue to play that role. We think it is important. The Compact for Africa in which we are part, uh, a partner is one that holds out a lot of interest for us because we see it as something that can inspire more and more German interests in, our, in, in the growth of our economy. And once again, I want to focus on the people that have come with you as those that will be the harbingers of this increased and expanded German investment interest in our nation. We live in a region where the jihadist insurgency, the terrorist menace is particularly prevalent, especially in the Sahelian uh, part of, of West Africa. 
We want to thank you for the assistance that Germany has been providing in the fight against terrorism and the jihadist menace. And to say that within our modest means, we will continue also to play as effective a role as we can. Because clearly, uh, it is in our interest to do so. And it is our interest to contribute to ridding the region of these instruments of dis destabilization and destruction. We believe that military solutions are by themselves not the end of the matter because we have to be able to also to address the root causes of how come these insurgencies have been able to take root in our areas. And that is the whole business of economic growth, the training of our youth, the acquisition of skills, and the creation of opportunities that would allow people to have a more positive engagement with life rather than the throwing bombs and maiming and destroying people. Your visit has come at a, at a good moment in Ghanaian history. The journey that we embarked on 25 years ago, the journey of democratic accountability, is one that is get, gathering pace. As you know, uh, in these 25 years of the Fourth Republic, we've had three changes of government in a peaceful and constructive manner. The last was which brought me here. And we believe that the Ghanaian people are now fully committed to that democratic journey, a journey that recognizes that respect for human rights, the rule of law, are the center of any modern, efficient, and acceptable method of governance. There are areas of concern for us, which is the strength of our institutions to deal with drug trafficking, human trafficking, uh, is not as robust as we would like it to be. Uh, but then also, that is also a function of the nature and the strength of our economy. But definitely the concern that we live in a, a country which affords its citizens an opportunity for a dignified life. That is the central concern that is, that is animating us. And the peace and stability of our country is therefore also extremely critical. We want to collaborate with you and with other countries in the West who, because of many shared principles and values, especially the values of democratic engagement, but also because we think that there is a lot that we can do together to raise the living standards of our people and as well as benefit the prosperity of our European nations. And your visit here is a way of highlighting for us the significance of countries like Germany in the, in the, in, in the growth of, of, of our country. So we can say that uh, we are very proud to have you here with us. The whole world knows about Angela Merkel and the, and the work that you have been doing in, in, in Europe and uh, that you have found time to come and visit us. It's all too short. We would have liked you here for more than one day. But I, I'm hoping that you'll have an opportunity to come back and give pay us a longer visit. But madam, you're very welcome. Aquaba. Thank you very much for coming. Madam Chancellor, Mr. President, thank you for your comments. We have received four questions from journalists here, two from the Ghanaian delegation and two from the German delegation. I'll start with Mr. Samuel Riafi of CTFM, who has a question. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. Um, the German Marshall Plan, which is titled Africa and Europe, a new partnership for development, peace, and better future, uh, rests on three pillars, economic activity, trade, and employment, peace and security, democracy, rule of law, and the, the, the third one, which is democracy and rule of law. We have human rights, political involvement, and fight against corruption. My question is, how has Ghana performed under the third pillar, which is democracy, rule of law, human rights, 
and fight against corruption. Thank you very much. Ja, ich ähm, habe mir in der Vorbereitung des Besuches natürlich noch einmal auch die Dinge angeschaut und es äh, ist zum Beispiel It is an expression of the great freedom that uh, governs your society, that Ghana has received best grades from uh, reporters without borders in the field of free media. The president pointed out in what he said that uh, three peaceful changes of government uh, have taken place three times. Elections have taken place in a peaceful environment. Now, when we speak about corruption, there is still room for improvement here, and we can work together to do so. That is also one of the reasons why, we, with regard to the compact with Africa, we are uh, paying attention to the fact that certain tax structures are transparent. And I used the opportunity today to talk to the President about this being uh, meant and directed at everyone. This also is true for companies, international companies that are here and try to avoid paying their taxes here. Uh, in so doing, making it more difficult for Ghana to take a better development. But Ghana, generally speaking, is in the vanguard of those who uh, fight for democratic development in Africa. And as the President, I'm in a position to say that it is fair to say that Ghana and Germany share values and principles. From Mr. Elton John Broby of the Multimedia Group. Thank you very much, Mr. President. My question relates to trade and investment, and indeed it, it formed the premise upon which you are on this tour in Africa. How is it being scaled up? And in terms of investment, can you fill us in on the MOU and how that translates into jobs? Because ultimately, if we are seeking to address the issue of illegal migration, finding jobs for the people, will be the ultimate goal. And whilst at it, 14 years ago, the former president of Germany, white scholar, said that the, the world will be measured, the humanity of the world will be measured by the fate of Africa. Is this still relevant now, that particular statement? Thank you very much. Well, well, we feel a certain obligation here. I'm afraid we have to do more, but I think it's fair to say that since the president took office, much progress has been made and that a great number of investments have been uh, initiated. The Embo and today offer up new opportunities to I brought a business delegation with me in order to ensure that projects are being realized. What we to assist Ghana's economic development by combining training and vocational training, uh, which we do with the help of our Ministry for Economic Cooperation, whilst at the same time also making it easier for young people to have access to capital and set up their own companies. Uh, our, we also want to help improve the situation in agriculture. There is one company that I've got with me in my delegation that tries to uh, improve the value created from sweet potatoes, not only focusing on planting them here, but also processing them so that products result that can be marketed in Europe. We need many more such examples and efforts. I think Ghana and Germany are on a good path here. Questions that you're posing is like I'm having to mark my own examination questions. And uh, I don't think it's a good idea with uh, people marking themselves. And, uh, the, so that's so why I prefer that these answers are given by Chancellor Merkel. Perhaps there'll be more uh, questions that will be directed at me which don't require me to, to comment on my own activities. Thank you, Mr. President. We have a question from Herr Lothar Keller. Ja, Frau Bundeskanzlerin, das Volumen von Investitionen der deutschen Wirtschaft in Afrika generell und auch hier in Ghana ist ja immer noch sehr gering, auch wenn Ghana jetzt die Abkommen still abgeschlossen werden. Wenn Sie uns sagen, even if you sign agreements today, what do you see as the reasons? Where you do you see impediments to further investments? What ought to change? And Mr. President, perhaps you can just briefly tell us where you would wish to see German companies invest, where do you see the greatest need for such investment, and how do you think can you improve the investment conditions? There's always some concern that has been expressed with regard to the local content legislation. 
Now, as far as Germany is concerned, for quite some time we've been work working on this, and we will continue to do so not only to uh, present a German investor from Germany, but to also provide with him or company that with a model of financing. Other countries are much better here. They don't submit offers without also, you know, bringing the financing uh, with it. Uh, it is something new for the way Germans do business, uh, but uh, we are learning and we have identified ways and means uh, where we can do that. We're using the KFW, we're using GIZ, and try to bring the private investment better into play. Uh, we have reduced retention for companies who intend to invest in Ghana and want to have a state guarantee. It's only 5% now. Um, and uh, when it comes to Hermes credit guarantees, we will also have to reconsider whether we have graded the risk categories appropriately. I think sometimes people are lagging behind uh, in their assessment of the developments in the countries and think of the situation it w as it was 10 years ago. German companies that might have need for further capital uh, is another case in question. Perhaps we can develop the right instruments to help them. We are cooperating very closely here with the Economics Ministry, the Foreign Ministry, the Finance Ministry, and the Ministry for Economic Cooperation and the Chancellery. Uh, and uh, we are reviewing and adapting our strategy on Africa in the face of these new competitors we uh, are confronted with. Areas of concern for us. We want to modernize our agriculture. We want to develop our industry and our manufacturing base. We want also to strengthen our financial sector. So these are areas which obviously we would welcome investment from countries like Germany. We have the capital, have the knowledge, have the capacity, um, because it is, these are the transformative areas of going forward for our, our economy. Uh, that we are able to enhance considerably productivity across the board. And it can only be done if we strengthen our industrial activity and development and our agricultural development. So these are the areas. And we think that the, um, the, the picture that is being painted of what we're trying to do provides those incentives and those opportunities. We are very, very, very concerned about finding sources of long-term finance for the growth for the development of our infrastructure as well as sources of finance for our industrial development. These are also areas of, of engagement that we are hoping that this trip and the presence of the Chancellor here will provide us an opportunity to see what we can do about it. It's important that the process of development also is accompanied by increasingly the capacity of Ghanaians themselves to manage their own affairs. I don't see how, you can't call development any other than which says that people then are in a position to manage their own affairs. Not forget just even just only, but that they are in a position to manage their own affairs. And the whole thinking behind the idea of, the, of local content laws, legislation and provision is to reflect and address that matter. Yes. There's always going to be room for discussion and negotiation, just when people do so in a good faith manner about the extent to which you begin, how far you move on this stage, etc. All of those are matters that can be put on the table. But what cannot be put on the table is the fundamental commitment that our development must reflect our capacity to manage and, and deal with things on our own. And we can only do it if we consciously insist on the involvement of our own people at every stage of the development of our nation. So yes, I, I'm aware that there are, there are companies that have, 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 have issues with the, some of the figures that are set for local content participation. But as I say, those are matters that can legitimately be the source of discussion, but that um, we are going to uh, abandon that way of thinking. That one is not on the table at all. I hope that uh, I'm sufficiently clear. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We will take a final question from Herr Nico Fried. 
Mr. President, ähm, es gibt in Deutschland, nach den Zahlen, die uns vorliegen, etwa 4.000 äh, Ghana, die eigentlich äh, zurück in ihre Heimat in sollten, Germany, haben Sie über diese Thematik... In Deutschland gibt es etwa 4.000 Ghana, die zurück in ihre Heimat sollten. Haben Sie über das mit dem Kanzler federal gesprochen? In Deutschland gibt es etwa 4.000 Ghana, die zurück in ihre Heimat sollten. There would be a possibility to stay in Germany and live in Germany. And a question addressed to the German Chancellor. Three years ago, you said, Madam Chancellor, and that uh, will continue to be linked to your chancellorship. We will, su we will succeed. We will manage. That was at the time when we had the refugees pouring in from Iraq and Syria. Uh, nevertheless, um, there is still the concern expressed that that might also repeat itself with such a movement coming from Africa. Uh, do, do you think that this expression that you no longer use these days would also be valid uh, when you look at the dimension of the problem here in Africa? I'm, I'm sure that the, uh, the 4,000, allegedly 4,000 illegals, Ghanaian illegals in Germany, given the opportunity to live in Germany legally, would take, they would jump at the, at the possibility. But that, that would be a matter for, for the German authorities to decide. But certainly we are concerned, in terms of the numbers of, of Ghanaians who live in Germany, it's a relatively small proportion. There are some 40 to 50,000 Ghanaians living in Germany. And we're talking about three or four thousand, is less than 10 percent of the population that are caught up in, in this illegal status. Uh, we are working with the authorities in Germany to find a way of dealing with this, uh, this, this population, this small population of illegals that are there. Uh, clearly, uh, some an amnesty or a decision that uh, the, the, their stay there can be transformed into a legal situation. That would definitely benefit them if that was on the table. But if that is not on the table, we, uh, they are Ghanaian nationals once it's been so established. We have to work to see what, how we can do to, to determine their status in the future. Wir haben ja 2015 eine Situation erlebt, in der sehr viele Bürgerkriegsflüchtlinge aus Syrien Uh, the conditions they had to live in the, the UN camps, there wasn't enough food, there was no education whatsoever, and we've learned from that experience. This is why I said that such a situation is not going to repeat itself. The question of, you know, Africa being the neighboring continent of Europe and the European Union, that is a completely different thing. Look at the IES. Uh, uh, we, uh, they have been able to put a stop to the IS efforts to uh, firmly ground itself here. Um, fewer people have died uh, in areas where political conditions are still completely unacceptable. But when we look to Africa, we're talking about something quite different, and thus we have to succeed in developing a new kind of neighborhood. Um, Minister Muller thus chose to speak of a Marshall Plan, not because we, you know, are replicating what they did after the Second World War, but we are aiming for the same sin, sa thing. We want to, as President Akufo Aru said, make the people independent again, self-confident, that they're capable uh, uh, to um, govern their own affairs in a self-confident manner. And if we were not of the belief or convinced that that could be achieved, um, then we would also have to admit that we're not capable of keeping the European Union united, that a united European Union is only possible if we deal with questions of migration and having a partnership with Africa. We have to find a response here. And we're talking, of course, of tackling the root causes of migration and flight. And that cannot be achieved by pulling up the drawbridge. It can only be achieved if we create a win-win situation for both sides and that we together fight those who uh, put at risk the lives of so many people and make 
often 11 out of it, money that is not being used for a good purpose, but it is then again used to, for criminal purposes. And I think that that is our task. It's at Ghana's task, at Germany's task, it's the task of many countries. We believe that we can do this, that we can find a solution to these problems, but it's not something that can happen overnight. The question is really of a principled nature. Do you think it's possible to survive by drawing up the drawbridge? No, I don't think so. I think we can develop together. Of course, we have to protect our external borders, but in a sense, in a way that allows the other side to th prosper and thrive, uh, and assisting one's neighbor to see the young people thrive. It is a task that uh, we have had to maybe focus more on in the course of the last three years than earlier. And then again, you have to be aware of the fact that Africa is not just Africa. We're talking many countries here with different cultures and traditions, with wonderful creative cultures and traditions. And as much as we expect that people make a distinction between Germany and the Netherlands, uh, the people in Africa can expect of us that we make a distinction between Senegal, Ghana and Angola, and that we know what is important for that country and what is less important for another country. You know, it does have importance. And then Africa does acquire face for us. We know the weaknesses, we know of the strengths of the individual countries. And I, for one, would wish to make a contribution for us setting out on that path. I believe that to be the right approach. While they do that, we are informed that that participated in the business conversation has just completed. And His Excellency the Vice President is joining us. He will take his place just close to the Ministers of State before we move for lunch. We ask Ministers of State to move into the Banquet Hall. We ask Ministers of State to move into the Banquet Hall and our invited guests as well to move into the banquet hall at this stage. We also invite the media into the banquet hall. <laughs> 